Hey cellos, this is going to be a how to play it video about the first 10 measures of Sahara Crossing. We're going to go over the notes and anything that might be tricky and then I'll play the whole excerpt for you so you know what it sounds like for your Friday quiz. Uh, we're going to start with measure 1 right here and then we're going to stop on measure 10. Now I can already hear you guys complaining and saying that oh no we play the same thing over and over again and it's not fair and I get it. But also the groove that you guys set up at the beginning is actually pretty cool sounding and it makes the violin and viola part sound much more interesting. Plus, you guys have this melody towards the end that nobody else plays and it's actually really tricky for you guys. So it's a lot easier for violins and violas and basses to learn how to play B flat, but you guys have to learn a whole new way of holding your hand. That backwards extension that we're learning for how to play E flat works the same way on A string for B flat. So this song, it's better to have just a, that one small hard part and have the rest of the song be pretty easy so that we can really focus our attention on learning those backwards extensions. Hey cellos, this is gonna be a how to play it video about the first 10 measures of Sahara Crossing. That's your Friday quiz for this week. So we're gonna go over the notes and anything that might be tricky, and then I'll play the whole excerpt for you guys so that you know what it sounds like. Now I know looking at this song, you're thinking we pizzicato a lot and we play the same thing over and over again. This is just another March of the Metronome situation. Uh, but listen, this whole song is about learning how to play B flat and E flat, and that's a lot easier actually for the violins, violas, and basses to learn how to do than it is for you guys. To play B flat on the A string and E flat on the D string, you have to learn a whole new hand shape called a backwards extension. So you guys get to do this in the song and you get to have a whole melody all to yourself, but it's better to have just that one small concentrated hard spot and have the rest of the song be a little bit easier so we can work on perfecting it. Plus, I think your rhythm at the beginning and all throughout the song makes the whole song have a really good groove to it. So I know you're gonna complain, there's nothing I can do about it. I promise it's good for you guys. Plus, you'll have a couple of easy Friday quizzes coming up. All right, so starting at the beginning, you notice it's pizzicato. And I'm going to practice this with my bow in my hand because there's a lot of places where we have to do a quick switch between bow and pizzicato. But we're crossing strings a lot. We're going from G to D and then all the way over to the C string. So if this is hard for you to do with your bow in your hand, you can practice it without it. And I'm okay with you it if you take your Friday codes without it, but eventually you want to get comfortable holding your bow and being able to switch strings. For starters, we start on open G and D string. In fact, we do the same thing for four measures in a row. And this pattern is actually pretty easy to get down. All you really need to know is the first note of every measure because the second note is always going to be the next highest string. So if we start on G, our high notes are open D. If we start on open D, our high notes are open A. And then when we play open C, our high notes are open G. So that's pretty easy to get figured out. The rhythm, we have to work on keeping it nice and steady. So it should sound like. You're gonna be tempted to rush through the quarter notes at the end of the measure. Make sure it is quarter, eight, eight. already getting into a bad habit. I have my hand down here kind of resting out of the way and by the time I get to measure 10 I'm going to be scrambling to get it back in place and be able to play in tune. So actually I should probably practice with my hand up here. All right so we got the first four measures G and D. When we get to measure five we stay on D and then we play open A. Back to G. Then this one's the hardest one and I have a hard time with this. When I did our play along um, recording I kept missing my C string. So I actually had to do like a real noob move and I had to like look down so that I could get my C string. But then when I practiced that a couple of times, then I felt more comfortable getting to open C. So you might have to go from G to C a bunch of times. Um, then that's pretty much all the tricky stuff here until we get to measure 10. So after we play um, C and G, then we play G and D, and we play C and G again, we have this nice little walk down from open D to C to B flat to A. The finger numbers here are open, four for C, two for B flat, and one for A. 
That's the only tricky note in here. So we go from D, C, B flat, A. If you play three fingers, it won't sound as cool. It's not in the style. So make sure you get that B flat in there. Okay. All right. Hopefully that's pretty much everything that's tricky. If you need to, you can write in the first note of every measure that changes. Like maybe um, here you could remind yourself to play D and here you could write G and then C if you're having a hard time, but they're all open strings, so it shouldn't be too bad. All right, I'm gonna play the whole thing for you so you know how it sounds. Okay, I've got this hand ready, got my bow hand ready, but again, you can practice it without your bow in your hand if you need to. Ready, set, go. missed my C string one of those times and also I feel like I almost missed putting my fingers on the G string so you really want to take that last measure to get those fingers ready so I don't want to hear a pause there when all of a sudden you have to stop and figure out how to, where to put your fourth finger make sure you practice that spot you can also add the fancy dynamics if you would like to notice that we have a crescendo here at measure nine so we're going to gradually get louder and then after we play forte we can get softer That's just an extra detail that you can add if you have time. All right, good luck practicing and I'll see you later.